Good morning, Brooks. Good morning. It is a pleasure for me to address you as we honor veterans, those who have served or are actively serving their country in a military service. Uh, for today is Veterans Day. I could speak to you about many things. My students know this. But for today, I will stick to the basics of what led me to military service and ultimately what led me here to Brooks. Before I jump in, I have a question for you. What is your job? What do you think your role or function is as a member of the Brooks community? If you opt to phase out while I am speaking, I know some of you will, at least consider what you think your job as a Brooksian might be. All right, so in keeping with Brooks Chapel faculty speaker tradition, here's a picture of a much younger version of me. All right, I'm obediently posing for this absurd picture because my mother told me to stand with the flowers and be pleasant because it was my job to listen to my parents. Sure, sure. I'm not sure how pleasant I look, but I stood by the flowers. This younger version of me had no idea how much I'd come to appreciate community and the people who do their jobs to maintain it, but I had enough common sense to do what my parents told me to do. At a young age, my father told me that I should consider a future in the military, so that's what I did. I always knew military service would be part of my future. It's a family tradition. My father's hope was that I would serve in the Army as he did, but after doing some research, I came to the realization that the Army was not the best fit for me. The Coast Guard was better. The Coast Guard is often forgotten as a military service, probably for many reasons. Chief among them is likely that it is not part of the Department of Defense. It's part of the Department of Homeland Security. And the missions of the Coast Guard are primarily focused on peacetime domestic missions like drug interdiction, port security, and search and rescue. The peacetime focus is why the service appealed to me. The other aspect of the Coast Guard that I found compelling was the fact that the service was, and still is, committed to making aims to diversify its enlisted and officer corps with qualified people of all races, ethnicities, and orientations. I showed up at the doorstep of the United States Coast Guard Academy in July of 1995, convinced that I would be able to contribute to society, and I was pretty sure that I would learn something along the way as well. I figured college was good for that, if nothing else. My first summer at the Coast Guard Academy and as a member of the military was quite possibly the most miserable time of my existence. It was also pretty awesome. I learned things about myself that I would never have learned under any other circumstances. I learned that you don't need as much sleep as you think you do. Yeah, the military is where I developed this skill, for those of you who are wondering. I also developed an appreciation for the value of community and the people who do their jobs to make sure a community is successful. I know that we talk a lot about community here at Brooks. To be honest, the community aspect of life on campus is what brought me here. The idea of community is a very important concept to me, and I don't think of community as some trite notion or pat catchphrase. It's a pretty big deal to me because for me, it goes beyond the idea of a group of people with a common interest. To me, community means comfort, it means safety, it means home. One may not like the idea of depending on others, but if you are part of a true community, you know that others are there to support you, whether you have to really, whether, without you having to really ask for assistance. Wendell Berry notes that, quote, a community is the mental and spiritual condition of knowing that the place is shared and that the people who share the place define and limit the possibilities of each other's lives. It is the knowledge that people have of each other, their concern for each other, their trust in each other, the freedom with which they come and go among themselves, unquote. Next slide, please. The moment I gained a true appreciation of what community meant coincided with learning the significance of doing one's job. You should prepare yourselves. I'm gonna share a sea story now. Get excited. All right. Part of the summer training for new freshmen or fourth class cadets at the Coast Guard Academy is to spend a week on the Coast Guard Bark Eagle. The Eagle is the Coast Guard's training ship. One learns a great deal about oneself, life, and the other people on this boat. One also learns about one's fortitude against the travails of seasickness and living in clo close quarters with others. Every person who sails on board Eagle as a crew member forms a definite opinion about this ship, if not their experience. I had a great experience, but Eagle, in my mind, will always be dubbed the misery ship, which is unfortunate because I actually do have a few fond memories from my time on board, a few. Every cadet at the Coast Guard Academy spends one week aboard the Eagle to acclimate them to seagoing life, their first year in a residence. 
Cadets also learn that while on board, they have a job, one of care. Take care of the ship, take care of your shipmate. I'd like to dispel any romantic notions of Titanic-esque king of the world whimsy you might be harboring. No. Sailing on Eagle, just like getting underway on any military vessel, is a great deal of work, hard work. You will notice that Eagle is a sailing ship. Those sails do not raise and lower themselves. They are raised and lowered by sailors, or rather cadets, or whatever crew is serving on board the ship at any given time. Raising and lowering the sails means hauling on lines from the deck of a ship, but also untying the sails before raising them, as well as lowering and securing the sails. All of this means people climbing the masts and across the yard arms with lengths of rope to tie or untie the sails depending on the evolution. Depending on the weather, the procedure can be relatively simple or not. Learning how to do these tasks in good weather, think placid waters and no wind, makes for pretty horrible training because it's not practical seamanship. I learned to do these tasks on a relatively calm day. So, there I was, the third day in on my leisurely sea voyage. Those of us not on duty watched a movie. Some of you may have heard of it, White Squall. It was about a ship basically being destroyed in, the in a sea storm because that's not foreboding at all. <laughs> After the movie, I went to bed and at three in the morning, alarm sounded with voices screaming for all hands to report on deck. We were in the middle of a storm at sea because of course we were. Learn something here, people. Don't watch movies about ship disasters before or while on an actual sea voyage. No good will come of it. As I stood on the deck of the ship in the rain, looking up to the top of the forward mast and saw the sails straining against the wind, I had two thoughts. Well, that doesn't look good. Quickly followed by, oh no. And other words that one should likely not say in chapel. Yes, that moment that I realized that I had to climb Eagle's foremast to help bring down the s and secure the fore top gallant sail in a storm at sea with the ship pitching back and forth like a toy boat in the wind and rain was the first moment I really wondered about my life decisions. And then suddenly I was being yelled at to do my job because the sail wouldn't bring itself down. Did I mention my fear of heights? Oh, well, there was that. So. As one climbs the rigging of a tall ship, one is equipped with a harness with a clip that looks like a carabiner. That gets clipped to the boat along the way as you're climbing. I can attest to the fact that they work because at times that metal clip was the only thing attaching me to the ship. It was literally my only point of contact. When I made it to my spot on the yard arm to help bring down the sail and furl it before tying it down, I was scared confused, and I may have lost a couple of the previous days' meals over the side of the ship. Frozen, in fear, and hanging onto the ship for dear life, I didn't realize that at some point I had failed to clip into the rigging of the ship. One of my classmates, Matt, positioned 10 yards or so away from me on the yard arm, noticed that I was not moving. I was hugging the yard arm. It's, I wasn't moving. Um, he noticed that I wasn't moving, and because his situ situational awareness was much better than mine in that moment, he noticed that I, I, I was also not clipped in and actually did something about it. He shuffled over, clipped me in, and then yelled at me to do my job and help bring the sail in and secure it. So obviously, everything worked out okay. I'm here telling you about it, but it doesn't always work out. Sailors have died falling from the rigging of Eagle because they're not clipped in. On that day, I had someone watching out for me. Matt took care of me, literally saving my life, so we could take care of the ship, because those sails weren't going to bring themselves down. The fact of the matter is, I hardly knew Matt prior to that day, but none of that mattered, because we were part of the same team, or rather, community. We are friends now, because, well, pro tip, when someone saves your life, they pretty much become a friend for life. There's holiday cards and everything. All of this is to say, members of, community, of your community look out for you even when you don't realize that you need someone in your corner. Veterans are inculcated, it's a Mimbean word, with the mantra of community, with the ideas of teamwork, esprit de corps, leave no man or woman behind. For me, a veteran Coastie, my mantra of community is, take care of your ship, take care of your shipmate. At its foundation, community is a concept so basic that all groups can adopt it, and every member of a community can do their jobs to make their community great. 
So, what's your job here at Brooks? I've modified my Coast Guard mantra since our school is obviously not a ship, but generally, besides teaching English courses, I'd like to think my job here is to take care of the campus and take care of the community. Figure out your job or what you should be doing to make your community, this community, better, and do it. Do your job. As Ms. Bender suggested when she spoke last week, do the right thing. Also, look out for each other, help each other, and help each other to succeed. Make the community greater because you're a member of it. Thank you, and you're welcome for my service.